if the gravitational force between you and your backpack wasn't super exciting and or useful, maybe this will be a little bit more so. This is sample 6-8, Earth's gravitational force on you. So we're going to go back and assume you have a mass of 70 kilograms. The other object in this scenario is the Earth. Earth's mass is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Now, for the distance here, you might say, well, I'm on Earth's surface, so the distance is zero. But remember, Earth's pulling you from the center, so we need to use the radius of the Earth for our R in this problem. So, going back to F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. That was messy, I apologize. <laughs> so we have Newton's, gra or the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. We have our, ma our mass, which is 70 kilograms, and Earth's mass, which is much larger. All right, remember our distance has to be in meters. So the way I did that was 6370 times 10 to the third meters, and we're going to square that. Okay, now the gravitational force between you and your backpack was very small because you guys are both very small. However, Earth is bigger, right? Citation needed, 687 newtons. That is essentially your weight on Earth, okay? Now, back in Chapter 4... We also learned a different way to calculate the weight of an object, and it was just by using mg, right? m times little g, our 9.8, which is our acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. Now, if you do that, you get 686 newtons, and the difference is just rounding, so bear with me. These, these answers are the same. So what's up with that, all right? The reason that works is because we're going to set fg equal to fg, and we're going to do it the easy way, okay, where little m is u, right? Remember, when we did mg, we never entered the mass of the earth, right? Okay, we're going to set that equal to big G times little m, which is u, again. Here we have the mass of the earth, so I'm going to use m sub e for earth, and now things are going to get messy, so I'm going to erase that. Uh, well, I guess i got to erase more than that. Um, M, which is U. M, which is the mass of the Earth. So I'm going to put that out here. Okay. Over what went down here was the radius of the Earth squared. Okay. So we've just set, we've got two different equations or expressions for the gravitational force. We're going to set them equal to each other and see what happens. So when we do that, your mass cancels out. And what we're left with is that our value for little g is equal to big G times the mass of the earth over the radius of the earth squared. And this is how you find acceleration due to gravity on other planets. If you enter the mass of the earth and you enter the radius of the earth here, what you get is g equals 9.8 meters per second squared, which you can do if you don't believe me. If you enter if you enter the mass of the moon and the radius of the moon, you'll get 1.6 meters per second squared. I think Mars is about 4.3, and those are all that I have handy right now. But this is how you can find acceleration due to gravity on, a, on any sort of body where you know the mass and the radius. So that sample 6-8, we're going to use this a lot, okay? It doesn't appear on your formula sheet, and the reason it doesn't appear on your formula sheet is because you know how to derive it if you understand how gravity works.